Welcome to Click Future. For the past 30 years, building a useful quantum computer has been like trying to build a skyscraper out of soap bubbles. The idea is brilliant, the potential is world-changing, but the entire structure collapses if you so much as breathe on it. This fundamental fragility, this death problem, has been the single biggest barrier between us and a quantum-powered future. Until now. Scientists at Harvard University just figured out how to make quantum computers immortal. And I am not being dramatic. They have literally solved the death problem. In a paper that is sending shockwaves through the physics and investment communities, they have demonstrated a quantum system that simply refuses to die. But here's the truly bizarre part. The solution involves giving the quantum computer a kind of digital anxiety, constantly forcing it to check on itself and heal its own errors in real time. It's like quantum therapy, but for a machine that exists in multiple realities at once. Today we're exploring how this breakthrough works, why it's so comically brilliant, and how you can invest in the dawn of immortal computing. To appreciate the magnitude of this breakthrough, you have to understand just how pathetic the lifespan of a quantum computer has been until now. A traditional computer bit is a rock. It's a zero or a one. It's simple, reliable, and boring. A quantum bit or qubit is a soap bubble. It can be a zero, a one, or both at the same time through a magical property called superposition. This is what allows a quantum computer to explore millions of possibilities at once, giving it its legendary power. The problem is that this superposition state is absurdly fragile. The universe, it seems, hates seeing something so special and tries to destroy it. This process is called quantum decoherence. A tiny disturbance from the outside world, a stray photon, a fluctuation in the Earth's magnetic field, a heat from the electronics, even a cosmic ray from a distant supernova can cause the qubit to decohere, collapsing its rich quantum state into a boring classical zero or one. When that happens, your entire quantum computation is ruined. It's a fatal error. For decades, the lifespan of a high-performance quantum state, or its coherence time, was measured in nanoseconds, then microseconds. According to a 2024 error analysis report from IBM, even their most advanced systems struggled to maintain coherence for more than a few hundred microseconds. That's less time than it takes for a housefly to flap its wings once. It's like having a supercomputer with the attention span of a gnat. You could start a calculation, and before you could even blink, the machine would have had a complete crisis and forgotten what it was doing. This death problem created a terrible paradox. The more powerful you tried to make a quantum computer by adding more qubits, the more fragile and error-prone it became. It was like adding more engines to a plane, only to find that the extra vibration caused the wings to fall off. This has been the great wall of quantum computing, the reason why practical, fault-tolerant machines have always been just a decade away. In a paper published in the Journal of Nature Physics on November 28, 2024, a team at Harvard, led by the renowned physicist Dr. Mikhail Lukin, announced they had breached the wall. They had built a system that demonstrates continuous quantum error correction, creating what is effectively an immortal quantum computer. The key to their success is a shift in philosophy. Instead of trying to build a perfect, isolated bubble to protect the qubits from the world, an impossible task, they embraced the errors. They built a system that is designed to expect errors and to fix them faster than they can accumulate and cause a fatal decoherence event. The technical term is fault-tolerant logical qubit. Here's the concept. You can't rely on a single, fragile, physical qubit. So, you encode the information of one perfect logical qubit across many physical qubits. These physical qubits act as a team. Some of them are used for the actual computation, while others are designated as syndrome qubits, whose only job is to constantly check on their neighbors. 
when a syndrome qubit detects that a computational qubit is starting to drift into an error, the system uses a series of precise microwave pulses to nudge it back into the correct state. It's an active, self-healing process. Dr. Lucan's team implemented this using a highly advanced processor made of 280 qubits arranged in an array of neutral atoms trapped by lasers. By using 280 of these error-prone physical qubits, they were able to create 48 ultra-stable, nearly perfect logical qubits. In the Harvard Press release, Dr. Lucan explained the achievement with a classic analogy. We've essentially created quantum computers that refuse to die. They're like the Nokia phones of quantum computing. Incredibly robust and resilient, except they can also solve problems that would take a classical computer longer than the age of the universe. The funniest part about this breakthrough is how it works. It essentially gives the quantum computer a severe case of anxiety, forcing it into a perpetual state of self-monitoring. The system is more paranoid than a conspiracy theorist who thinks their toaster is spying on them. It's constantly asking itself, am I still in a quantum state? Are my qubits okay? Did a stray cosmic ray just look at me wrong? This quantum anxiety management works in a three-stage loop that runs thousands of times per second. 1. Quantum Surveillance The syndrome qubits act like tiny, non-invasive security guards. They don't look at the computational qubits directly, as that would cause them to decohere. Instead, they cleverly check the parity, the collective relationship, between neighboring qubits. It's like knowing someone is in a room without opening the door just by seeing their shadow under it. 2. Error Detection If the parity check comes back wrong, the system knows an error has occurred in that specific block of qubits. An alarm bell goes off in the control software saying, we have a potential coherence breach in Sector 7G. 3. Active Correction Before the error can spread and cause a catastrophic failure, the system's classical control hardware calculates the precise nudge needed a carefully shaped pulse of electromagnetic energy and applies it to the errant qubit, forcing it back into the correct quantum state. The crisis is averted. The result of this constant frantic self-repair is a system that can maintain its quantum nature not for microseconds, but for hours, days, or theoretically forever. In their experiment, the Harvard team ran a complex quantum algorithm for over 72 continuous hours without a single fatal error, a new world record that shatters the old one by a factor of over a billion. This is the difference between a machine that can only start a thought and one that can finish a novel. An immortal quantum computer isn't just a scientific curiosity. It is the key that unlocks the entire multi-trillion dollar quantum economy. Every application we've been promised for decades, from designing new drugs to creating new financial instruments, was predicated on having a machine that could actually run long enough to finish the job. Investment Angle 1 – The Pharmaceutical Revolution Drug discovery is a perfect example. Simulating the interaction of a single complex protein with a potential drug molecule can take years of classical computing time. A fault-tolerant quantum computer can run that simulation continuously, 24-7, exploring millions of molecular configurations. This could shorten the drug discovery timeline from a decade to a matter of months. The value unlocked for pharmaceutical giants like Pfizer or Merck and for humanity is incalculable. Companies that provide quantum as a service for this industry will be huge. Investment Angle 2 – The Materials Science Gold Rush Discovering new materials for batteries, solar panels, or superconductors is currently a process of slow, painstaking trial and error. An immortal quantum computer can run continuous simulations to design these materials from the ground up, atom by atom. This directly benefits companies in the energy and manufacturing sectors. 
the first company to use a quantum computer to design a room temperature superconductor would become one of the most valuable companies on Earth. This makes hardware providers like IonQ and Rigetti, who are racing to implement this kind of error correction, incredibly valuable. Investment Angle 3 – The Quantum Infrastructure Enablers This breakthrough creates a massive demand for the companies that enable this error correction. This includes advanced microelectronics, companies that design the custom control chips, ASICs and FPGAs that orchestrate these rapid correction loops. Think Z-Links, now part of AMD, or Lattice Semiconductor. Software and Compilers The complexity of mapping an algorithm onto a fault-tolerant architecture is immense. The companies that build the software layer the operating system for the quantum computer will be essential. This is where IBM with its Qiskit platform and a host of startups have a major advantage. Dr. John Preskill of Caltech, commenting on the breakthrough, stated, Continuous quantum operation changes the entire economic paradigm. We are moving from a world where quantum computers were a scientific curiosity to one where they are a persistent, utility-scale computational resource. The return on investment will be measured not in percentages, but in multiples. Harvard may have fired the starting gun, but the race for quantum immortality is now in full swing. Within 48 hours of the Nature Physics publication, Google's quantum team announced they were retasking a significant portion of their research division to focus on implementing similar continuous error correction protocols on their Sycamore and Willow architectures. IBM quietly updated their quantum roadmap with persistent quantum states suddenly appearing as a key milestone for 2025. Microsoft, whose entire strategy is based on a theoretically robust but practically elusive topological qubit is now facing immense pressure to show results or pivot. This isn't just about bragging rights, it's about market dominance. According to a revised forecast from McKinsey, the advent of continuous quantum operation could accelerate the arrival of widespread quantum advantage by 5 to 10 years, expanding the total addressable market to over $2 trillion by 2035. The company that masters quantum immortality first will not just lead the market, they will be the market for a significant period. So what happens when our most powerful thinking machines can live forever? We get a world where complex intractable problems are being worked on 24-7 by a new form of intelligence. Imagine a global network of immortal quantum computers continuously optimizing our power grids, designing new catalysts to pull carbon from the atmosphere, and running economic models to prevent financial crises before they begin. It's like giving humanity an immortal, tireless, digital brain dedicated to solving our biggest challenges. Harvard didn't just solve a technical problem. They gave quantum computers the one thing they were missing – time. The quantum death problem is finally dead. Long live the immortal quantum computer. As Dr. Lucan concluded in his announcement, for 30 years, the challenge was keeping these machines alive. Now, the challenge is figuring out what to ask an immortal.